like art class in school. Raise your hand. Yeah. Some people like gym more than art. That's okay. I hear that a lot. But this artist loved the moon and loved traveling so much that he wanted to make people actually feel what it was like to be on the moon when they looked at his paintings. So he used some really cool colors. We're going to learn all about that. So it's called the artist or the astronaut who painted the moon. Oh, just in the middle of this. Oh, I can't see. You can't see. Well, maybe you need to come sit right up here. Do you need to move? Lights flashed, a rocket rumbled. Alan Bean's dream was about to come true. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The rocket roared off the launch pad. We would normally say what? Last off. Last off. I know a few of you wanted to say that. <laughs> Alan shook in his heavy spaceship suit. The other astronauts were shaking too. Richard Gordon flipped switches on the control panel. That's a lovely liftoff, Pete Conrad shouted over the noise. The shaking stopped as the spacecraft gained speed. Alan was in outer space. He had trained for this for so long. He was training to be an astronaut and as a scientist. And soon he would walk on the moon. So you just can't put on a spacesuit and get in a rocket ship and say you're an astronaut. You have to learn all kinds of things. You have to train and you have to be a scientist, not just an astronaut. Alan gazed out the window, marveling at the shapes and the colors in space. That's what we do as artists. We look at shapes and we look at colors. The sky turned to black. The earth was a blue and white ball glowing in the darkness. The moon was many shades of gray. Its mountains and craters seemed bigger the closer he got. Alan loved to think about the way things looked. As a boy, he made model airplanes to hang in his room. Green for the wings, red stripes for the tail, yellow stars along the sides. He dreamed of being a brave pilot himself one day. <coughs> Alan volunteered for Navy flight training. He learned to take off, soar through the air, and glide in for a smooth landing. The earth looked breathtaking from the cockpit. The white clouds above, the green fields below, the blue all around. Alan wished he could paint what he saw. He found an art class to teach him about patterns and forms. Alan dabbed his brush on canvases to paint a face of flowers. His flowers didn't look exactly real, but he didn't want them to. They were brighter and bolder than the real ones because he let his imagination take over. That's the fun thing about being an artist. Well, I'm imagining that when Alan painted the moon and the earth and the other planets, those were probably like clouds and land masses and they're the things he saw. No, I didn't hear. The moon was barren, that means empty, but also beautiful in its own way. Gray dust as far as he could see, thousands of black craters, hard white sunlight, and everything perfectly still. Alan and Pete pushed a red, white, and blue American flag into the dust. Alan puzzled over the strangeness of outer space. He and Pete took dozens of photographs. They set up scientific experiments to measure the moon's soil and the gases. Even in his 
spacesuit, Alan was much lighter than on Earth. He had fun bouncing around on his tiptoes. He could run and run without getting tired. His boots made deep marks where no one had stepped before. Alan was super strong in the moon's gravity. He threw a rock up and watched it go up, 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 up. Would it ever come down again? No. Oh, no. <laughs> the three astronauts zoomed back to Earth at 25,000 miles an hour. They splashed into the Pacific Ocean to end their awesome adventure. Alan's friends asked him about his time in space. What was it like up there? He tried to explain the moon's barren beauty, but words weren't enough. And his photographs just showed a grim and gloomy place. Pictures were all gray and black. They didn't look like fun, but being on the moon was amazing. There was so much, much more to the moon than that. So much magic and mystery. How could Alan share his story so others would understand? He pulled out his paints and brushes. Alan knew this was the only he, Alan knew he was the only artist ever to leave the earth, the only artist ever to see the moon up close. Maybe a painting could show how it felt to be in outer space. Alan began his work like a scientist. He, he didn't just get out his paints and his canvas and start painting. He made a plan just like a scientist. He built a model of the moon's surface and used an electric light as the sun. The model helped him paint the angles and shadows just right. Then Alan let his imagination take over. He added red and purple to the gray dust, blue and green to the black craters, yellow and orange to the white sunlight. The moon didn't look exactly real, but Alan didn't want it to. The painting showed how stunning outer space looked through his eyes, how it made him feel. He hoped others would feel the same thing, the wonder of walking on a new world. Alan liked his moon painting so much that he did another one, and another, and another one after that. He mixed even brighter, bolder colors on his palette. He could add real pieces of outer space to his paintings. He tried stamping them with astronaut boots. They must have been pretty big paintings if he stamped them with his boots, huh? He scratched them with the tools he used on the moon, and he sprinkled dust from his spacesuit onto the wet paint. The surfaces grew as rough and as rugged as the moon itself. A museum displayed Alan's paintings for everyone to see. Other astronauts came to remember their own awesome adventures in space. Boys and girls came too. They marveled at the shapes and the colors. They felt the wonder of walking on a new world. Some dreamed of being brave astronauts themselves one day. Others dreamed of being great artists. And some dreamed of being both. This page talks all about Alan Bean, the astronaut, about how in the story, as a young boy, he painted the airplanes. And then it talks about how he went to school to be a pilot. And then he joined NASA to become an astronaut. And then it talks about his, him creating his artwork. But this is pretty important. He says, I think of myself not as an astronaut who paints, but as an artist who was once an astronaut. It's a pretty awesome story, isn't it? It's fun to go on adventures. We can't go to the moon as kids. I can't go to the moon as an adult because I haven't trained, but I can be an artist. And all of you can be artists and you can create art that tells stories about your adventures.